Pratap Mallo was king of Kantipur from 1641 AD until his death in 1674 AD. He was born to his Maithali origin mother and Malla origin father, Lakshmi Nursing Hamalla, in 1624 AD. Pratap Mallo was the ninth king of Kantipur after the division of the Kathmandu Valley into three kingdoms. Gadi Bhim Mallo was a minister during the reign of King Lakshmi Narsingh Mallo, father of Pratap Mallo. Kaji Bhim Mallo was a man of considerable accomplishment. His contribution to the nation as a minister is so far considered to be the best ever in Nepal. Bhim Mallo secured a trade treaty that led to much prosperity in the nation. Nepali historian today say that no treaty in our history has been as favorable. The army of Kantipur led by Kazi Bhimmalla had started a war on Tibet. An army team led by Bhimmalla established Kantipur's right in Tibet's Kuti, Kerung and Khasa area due to the lack of coordination in Tibet's internal politics. The economic situation of Kantipur had become stronger and stronger as Kazi Bhimmalla had also arranged from different agreements. Traders from Kantipur were also allowed to open trading rooms and shops in Tibet. In addition to this, the economic position of Kantipur was strengthened as Kazi Bhim Mallah arranged for the Tibet traders to go to different places of India for trade businesses through Kantipur. The army of Kantipur under the leadership of Kazi Bhim Mallah had annexed some parts of Bhaktapur to Kantipur. It was natural for Kazi Bhim Mallah who had been making significant contribution to strengthen the condition of Kantipur to increase his pride in the Kantipur. Kazi Bhim Mallah was married to the sister of King Lakshmi Narsingh Mallah. When Bhim Mallah, after successfully concluding the trade treaty with Tibet, came back to Kathmandu, he became very popular both with the king and the people. But other ministers in the palace grew jealous of growing popularity of Bhim Mallah. There is no picture or sculpture of Kazi Bhim Malla. The Bhulukat Dega temple in Yetakha Bahal is believed to have been built by Bhim Malla in memory of his father. After the fame, the enemies blew the ears of King Lakshmi Narsingh Malla against Bhim Malla. Believing the conspirators, King Lakshmi Narsingh Malla executed Kazi Bhim Malla for trying to steal his throne. Bhim Mallah had to lose his life because of the lack of discriminating power on the part of the king who fell an easy prey to the intrigue, jealousy, and treachery of the ministers. Bhim Mallah's wife, Bhuvana Lakshmi Mallah, had gone to Sati, sitting on her husband's prey, cursing anyone who wants to do good for the country should never be good in this country. It is believed that any wish or curse from a woman committing sati comes true. After her husband was sentenced to death, Bhuvana Lakshmi Malla, sister of King Lakshmi Nar Singh Malla and wife of Bhim Malla, cursed Nepal, saying, Let the destiny of those who want the good of Nepal's palace be like this. Let no one have conscience in this palace. As Bhim Malla's wife cursed Sati when she went, there is a saying that Nepal is cursed by Sati. Shortly after the death of his brother-in-law Bhim Malla, King Lakshmi Narsingh Malla found out the truth. After that, King Lakshmi Narsingh Malla, who was remorseful for his misdeeds, lost his mental balance. When his father, Lakshmi Narsingh, instantly grew worse, Pratap Malla imprisoned his father. After imprisoning his father, Pratap Malla, at the age of 18, sat in the throne in 1641 AD. Lakshmi Narsingh died in captivity after 16 years. During this time, Dambar Saha was the king of Gorkha, Srinivas Malla and Yoganindra Malla were king of Lalit and Jita Mitra Malla was king in Bhaktapur. One thing about Pratap Malla was he was very ambitious king and at the period of time Kathmandu Valley was divided into three territories. Pratap Malla often fought with Lalitpur and Bhaktapur to annex them to his kingdom but could not succeed. He tried to play the king of Lalitpur and Bhaktapur against each other. 
Sometimes he sided with Bhaktapur and posed a menace to Lalitpur. Sometimes he sided with Lalitpur and fell upon Bhaktapur. His main aim was to annex Lalitpur to Kathmandu. But his aim was not fulfilled as the king of Lalitpur had the king of Koraka, Ram Shah, as his ally. Moreover, king of Lalitpur, Sri Nivas, son of Sridhi Narsing Malla, was no less inferior to Pratap Malla in courage and diplomacy. In 1634 AD, when Siddhi Narsing Malla was engaged in performing Koti Hom Pratap Malla, availing himself of the opportunity, made a surprise attack on Patan and conquered some of the places important from the strategic point of view. Dambar Saha, son of Ram Shah, had come with a contingent to help Siddhi Narsing Malla. Pratap Malla gave a lot of trouble to Narendra Malla, king of Bhaktapur. He made Narendra Malla pay tribute to him in the form of elephants. Later, against he sided with Sri Nivas Malla and laid a siege on Bhaktapur. He plundered Bhaktapur and carried away many valuables. But when Lalitpur sided with Bhaktapur, Pratap Malla signed a treaty with Bhaktapur. He wanted to unify those into one, but no matter how hard he tried, either by diplomatic way or by war, he did not succeed in unifying Kathmandu, Lalitpur, and Bhaktapur as one. Even though Pratap Malla failed to unify the three kingdoms into one, one thing he succeeded in doing was he extended and secured the border of Kathmandu. Plus, he had a monopoly over the trade with Tibet. Although Pratap Malla did not have a good relationship with the kings of the valley, he had good relationship with other neighboring kings. He had friendship with states like Makwanpur, Palpa. He also had a good relationship with Pastor Gurper, who entered the valleys from overseas. So Pastor gave a gift of a telescope to Pratap Malla. Hence, the economy of Kathmandu developed very well due to the trade with Tibet and during his reign, he was responsible for constructing majority of Kathmandu Durba Square. Pratap Malla was one of the king responsible for some magnificent and beautiful architectural structure around the Kathmandu. He also constructed a metal lion with gold ornaments by burying a pole in front of the temple of Talezu Bhawani. He is responsible for the expansion of Hanuman Dhoka Darwar, installation of gold statue in Hanuman Dhoka Palace, installation of two statue of Hanuman outside Hanuman Dhoka, construction of Rani Pokhari, installation of Gujwe Sodi, Dakshin Kali and Kotling at Paspati. Inside the Kathmandu Palace, he also created Sundari Tok and Mohan Tok. A pond was dug at Bandarkhal and filled it with water bought from Budanil Kontha and in the pond installed an image of Narayan lying on the water, an extract replica of Narayan of Budanil Kontha. There is a legend that in his dream Pratap Mullo saw that when he went to Budanil Kontha temple he died and it is believed till date that if any king goes to this temple it is sure that he dies. He is also the one who introduced Seto Machinder Jatra. He was interested in building temples. He built the image of Hanuman beside his palace. Since then, the palace is called Hanuman Doka. His major architecture can be seen in the building of Kal Bhairav in front of current Hanuman Doka and the temple of Gujweswari as well. He is also the king who offered golden umbrella to Pasupati temple. He also raised a pillar on the southern gate of Pasupati and established a gazing around near the area. So if we look at the history of Kathmandu, it was one of the times of culture and economic development during his reign. He is the guy that built the bullet-shaped shrines Pratapur and Anantapur next to the main stupa at Swambu to help him win victory over Tibet. Pratapur was hit by lightning. Santipur is also in Swambu complex. In the tunnels below this temple, a 1500 years old holy man is said to exist in the state of immortal meditation. The last man to see him was King Pratap Malla, who ventured down there in 1658 AD against bats and snakes and hungry ghosts to see holy man's advice in ending a drought that was ravaging the valley. He also set up a copper gilt bajra. 
Pratap Mulla was vastly learned and a poet. Many poems and verses he had composed are still found. He could compose poems even in Sanskrit. Besides Sanskrit, he has very well versed in Nepali Bhasa, Nepali, Bengali and Hindi. He also knew Arabic, Roman and English scripts. The inscription at Mohan Chok, which has 15 different scripts, bears testimony to this fact. Because of the excellent poem, he consulted himself the title of Khabendra, a king of poets. Himself learned, Pratap Mulla had a galaxy of learned men in his palace. Lambakarna Bhakta, who hailed from Maharashtra, Nir Simha Thakur, who hailed from Bihar, and Zamana Gurbaju from Kantipur were some jewels in the galaxy of learned men in the palace of Pratap Mulla. He was also very fond of music. Himself being a musician, musicians were welcomed and respected in his palace. There is a 17th century stone inscription in the Hanuman Dhoka that is set on the wall of the palace with writings in 15 language by, by King Pratap Mulla. Pratap Mulla, renowned for his linguistic abilities, set up this inscription on 14 January 1664 AD. A legend tells that milk will flow from the spout in the middle if somebody is able to decipher all 15 languages. Some people also say that the inscription contains coded directions to a treasure King Pratap Mulla had buried beneath Mohan Chok of Darwar Square. Modern historians have given him the reputation for being lewd and maintaining a harem. King Pratap Mulla has been said to have raped a virgin girl. The story says that when King Pratap Mulla proposed sex to the girl who did not even have menstruation, the girl who did not even know what the meaning of it got into confusion. Then King Pratap Mulla raped her. The girl who could not bear her pain died immediately after being forced by King Pratap Mulla. After the death of the girl, King Pratap Mala trembled with fear of faithful faith. He felt so guilty about the act that he wanted to clear up the scenes. On seeing the king's condition, he was immediately taken to Pasupatinath's shelter. At Pasupatinath, King Pratap Mala spent about three months doing penance. During this stay, he set up hundreds of siblings at Pasupati and also installed his statue with his two queens. Apart from that, he also performed Koti home. He weighted gold on one scale and on the other side he stayed himself and gave the gold to the charity. The gold bull that we see on the roof of Pasupatinath is also offered by King Pratap Mulla for his scene. King of Kantipur, Pratap Mulla's favorite queen was Ananda Priya, the princess of Bihar. Chakravartinda was the youngest son born on her behalf. He also had other queens and had eight sons. Some children passed away during childhood. However, Chakravartindra was the only prince who was very dear to King Pratap Mulla. While King Pratap Mulla was still alive, he wished to see his son enthronement. Till Pratap Mulla's time, it was traditionally established that only the eldest son can rule a kingdom after his father's death. But King Pratap Mulla wanted to try a new system to choose a son to become the king after him. He came up with an idea of letting each one of the son rule the kingdom for a year and observing them meanwhile. After consultation with Gyanananda Bhatta, a tantric scholar from South India, Prince Prathivendra, Nirpendra and Mahipendra were installed on the throne one year at a time. Pratap Mulla also issued silver coin bearing their name. The youngest prince, Chakravartindra, had turned 13. In 789, Chakravartindra was also crowned. Ascension to the throne was also made in Kantipur city by riding on an elephant. Less than four days after the coronation, the prince was rejoicing with the same elephant tied inside the Hanumandoka palace. Suddenly, the elephant got mad and angry, crushed Chakravitendra under the elephant's feet and Chakravitendra died in the state of heartbreaking. Silently, Chakravitendra was cremated at Sundari Chok inside the Hanumandoka. On the one hand, there was a rumor in the city market that on the occasion of coronation, the image of the triangle in silver coin minted in the name of Chakravindranda and the four different weapons included in it were very omniscious, which was the cause of his ultimate death. 
on the other hand the weeping and mourning inside hanuman dhoka mohan chok was unbearable queen ananta priya was heartbroken the would be king lost his life king pratap malla and his wife were in deep sorrow the king recovered but the queen couldn't pratap malla reached paspati early in the morning and had a serious consultation with tanti gyanananda After a long discussion a special project was prepared for the consolation of Queen Anantapriya There is a history that Pratap Malla built a Rani Pokhari to please Rani Anantapriya who was mourning the death of her 13 years old son According to Anta Shastra Pratap Malla himself led the construction of a huge reservoir The construction of the pond was completed within about 5 years that is Nepal Sambat 789 The inscription was laid in 790 Nepal Sambat. The pond is 180 meter long and 140 meter wide and covers an area of 62 rupani and 13 ana. Heartbroken by her son's death, the queen became ill and was unable to go on a pilgrimage. The water with which the pond was originally filled was taken from 51 sacred rivers throughout Nepal and India. thus ensuring its holiness pratap malla collected water from various holy places and lived in nepal and india like gosai kunda muktinath badrinath kedarnath and poured into the pond to sanctify it there is a legend that water is filled by tantric lode the initial name of rani pokhari was nu pukhu in newari language nu pukhu means new pond after its completion the queen visited the pond every evening and so the pond became the queen's pond or rani pokhari the main reason for the construction of this pond was deep affection for his youngest queen and on the other hand the jealousy in pratap malla at the time pratap malla's relationship with king jagat prakash malla of bhaktapur was very bitter there were many other reasons for the deterioration of bilateral relation in addition to the rich art skills beautiful architecture of bhaktapur state as compared to kantipur which had a feeling of hatred in pratap malla During the construction of Rani Pokhari by Pratap Malla four temples were built around the pond Bhairav's temple with power in the northwest corner Bhairav's temple in northeast corner Ganesha's temple in southeast corner and 16 armed Ganesha in the southwest After the construction of Rani Pokhari King Pratap Malla himself was one of the worshipers who regularly visited Rani Pokhari He used to reach Rani Pokhari in the morning bathing worshiping at Rani Pokhari and going to Hanuman Dhoka was his daily routine but as the day passed the king became unwell strong pratap malla began to look thin and weak doctors astrologers tantric etc were shown medicines was also given but it was no use no one was able to find out the actual reason One morning following the royal advisor's advice some spy people secretly follow the king the spy people found out that pratap malla has fallen in love with a beautiful woman going to rani pokhari was just a reason to spend some quality time with being with a beautiful woman but not only that the woman had already become pregnant on the behalf of the king who was that woman where did she came from was understood upon learning the truth all people of the royal court became terrified that woman was not really a human being but a ghost in the form of a woman the tantrics themselves advised that in order to subdue the ghost in the form of a woman one needs the help of a pagan person During the search they found a malla of muslim doing business in Kantipur city it was that muslim who managed to subdue the ghost in the form of woman by using magic power according to the legend the muslim removed fetus from the womb of a ghost in the form of woman a large stone elephant south of rani pokhari on which king pratap malla was riding that spot was tied to the trunk of the same elephant and the fetus of ghost in the form of a woman was pressed into it since then pratap malla's health started to improve as well it is said that rani pokhari where it was built was formerly occupied by kashmir muslims the muslims were expelled by order of king however pratap malla who was happy after recovering from the treatment of a muslim had provided the land for the burial of children at lani pokhari east for the regular prayers for the muslim of kantipur 
According to another legend, one 13-year-old girl died after being raped by Pratap Mulla. The girl was buried there. But every time he went there, the ghost child used to scare him. So to please the ghost, he built Rani Pukhari. It is believed that the fence have been built since the time of Rana rule after those who used to visit the temple first started committing suicide by jumping into the same pond. In order to find the authentic history, a well-organized wall has been created on the way to the temple since the time of Duddha Samshir. King Pratap Mulla somehow handled himself. His queen got extremely depressed. He spent her days doing nothing but just thinking about her son. Smiles were very rarely seen. Thus, in an attempt to get his wife to smile again, the king tried many things. Unsuccessful but trying, he came up with one more idea. He ordered every family that has lost someone that year to attend a carnival in strange clothes with a cow. Then the king showed all the people attending the carnival to his queen and said, All these people also lost someone close to them. Only then the queen understood that death is part of everyone's life. And in the end, when the people started cracking jokes about the royal persons themselves, the queen finally smiled. And this is how the festival of Gai Jatta started. The death of Pratap Mulla still remains a mystery. There is a legend that says that while watching the Harsiddhi dance, Goddess Harsiddhi herself is disguised appeared in the form of a beautiful girl. As King Pratap Mulla's eyes fell upon her, he tried to hug her. In rage, the goddess cursed him. King Pratap Mulla vomited blood and died on the spot. As the history suggests, he died a very strange sudden death. This happened when he was watching a religious dance of Harsiddhi. He suddenly fell down unconscious and died. He ruled for 33 years and died in 1684 AD. During his reign from 33 years from 1641 AD to 1674 AD, there was peace and prosperity in his kingdom. He successfully built so many landmarks which today some still stands. After his death, instability spread in Kantipur kingdom. After his death, there was much controversy over who would be on the throne. Pratap Malla had three sons and among the three sons, Nirpendra Malla was the eldest but Pratap Malla wanted his son Mahipatendra Malla to succeed him. But Pratap Malla's wish could not be fulfilled. The neighboring kings did not like this break in order of succession. Sri Nivas Malla, the king of Lalitpur, even voiced his protest. Sri Nivas Malla, king of Lalitpur, supported Nirpendra Malla on the ground of the seniority. Nirpendra ascended the throne of Kantipur and the man named Tikuti was appointed chief minister. Nirpendra offered a small golden bull to Pasupati Nath, which still stands on the west side of Pasupati. After the death of Nirpendra Malla at the age of 18, his brother Prathibendra Malla ascended the throne of Kantipur. Fearing that Mahipendra Malla might be a source of trouble, Prathibendra Malla imprisoned his brother Mahipendra Malla in 1685 AD. Prathibendra Malla extended his kingdom as far as Sinduli. Prathibendra Malla died in 1688 AD. Prathibendra Malla was believed to have poisoned by his chief minister Tikuti. Prathibendra Mollo was dragged out of his hiding place at Dev Patan and was killed. All of his son died. Pratap Mollo had left many landmarks that we Nepali should be proud of and the festivals he started still remains as the tradition that we all should be proud of. Either it is Seto Matsindranath Jatra or Gai Jatra or yearly opening of Rani Pokhari, Nepali's culture reached its height in the time of Pratap Mollo. Thank you.